Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem four from quiz seven, fall 2023, math 307, linear algebra at Cal State Fullerton. All right, this is a reasonably simple conceptual question. Uh, we're given a vector space V over a field F. Uh, we have a linear operator T uh, on V. We have a basis B. And we're assuming that with respect to B, the matrix of T is diagonal. Okay, so if I was writing down the matrix of T with respect to B, I get a diagonal matrix, which means I get entries along the diagonal, and I get zeros everywhere else. Okay. Now, it might actually be useful to give some names to these diagonal entries. So let's go through and give uh, kind of generic names here, lambda 1, lambda 2, through lambda, say, n, and here then would be the dimension of the vector space. Now, I called them generic names, but of course, they're meant to actually suggest something. Now, if our b was equal to, say, v1 through vn, then of course I could go through here and label the positions along the top and then along the side by v1 through vn. And uh, now I know that if I apply the ma uh, the operator t to v1, then it's giving me lambda 1 times v1, and then there's just zeros down below. So I would get that t v1 is equal to lambda 1 v1. And this right away should tell you, wait, there's something interesting here. v1 is an eigenvector, right? Of course, non-zero because it's coming from a basis for t corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1. All right, but then again, if we said, okay, well, what's t of v2? Well, again, there's zeros above the diagonal, so I just get lambda 2 times v2, and then there's zeros below the diagonal, and so in total, t v2 is lambda 2 v2. And I'd conclude that v2 is some eigenvector for t corresponding to lambda 2. And I keep going like this. Tvn would be lambda n vn, and so v sub n would be an eigenvector for t corresponding to lambda n. So, the question is what can we conclude about the vectors in B? They're all eigenvectors. So the vectors in B are eigenvectors. For t. Of course, corresponding maybe to possibly different eigenvalues, but that doesn't matter. All right? And this, of course, implies that B is an eigenbasis for V. All right? So diagonal matrices are really great. They tell you you must have found a really nice basis because it's an eigenbasis. Okay, we will see you next time.